Hey guys, welcome to Dirt Road Believer. I'm Tina and it is Thursday. Thank you so much for being here for today's devotion. This is one that you're not going to want to miss. We're coming up on the end of our 101 devotion series that we've had all August. And today's is especially insightful. It's called Heaven, Hell, 101. And if you have ever asked yourself or considered how can a loving God send someone to hell, um, we're going to answer that question. And so please stick around for the devotion. My son turned 16 recently and we had a little surprise party for him. Um, he loves wings, uh, he and his friends, and so we had a wing fest um, at a local restaurant here. And so uh, catch a snippet of that and then I'm going to meet you right back here for today's devotion. It's Crawford's 16th birthday and it's a surprise. So we're waiting on everybody to get here for the wing fest. We have Aunt Trisha and Uncle Bill. Uncle Bill, you're at the last party. You were at the last birthday, the hang gliding. You were at 15, so now you have to be at 17, 18. You changed. I've got the chickens uh, free-ranging in the yard and of course always the dogs all right let's jump into heaven hell 101 this is good 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 stuff now Tuesday we talked about that day 101 um, that there is a judgment day coming so today is going to tell what 
what happens after that day. Um, we are sent to our eternity and there have been preparations made for that day. So we're going to talk about that. At the most basic 101 level, heaven is greater and more wonderful than anything you could ever imagine and hell is worse than anything you could ever imagine. But we're going to get a little bit deeper into it than that. So I have heard people say that God is just too kind, too good to ever send anyone to hell. And they would be correct. They would be absolutely correct. Yet souls still wind up in hell for eternity. So let's discover why um, some go to heaven and while, while others go to hell. Um, first of all, heaven and hell are real places where eternity awaits everyone. And those who spend eternity in heaven are in the presence of God all the time. And those who spend eternity in hell are completely shut out from the presence of God, which is worse than any hot flame or torment you could ever experience. So let's take a look. Where are the glasses? Um, first, let's take a look where we see that. It's in um, 2 Thessalonians 1, 9. It says, They will pay the penalty of eternal destruction from the Lord's presence and from His glorious, glorious strength. On that day, when He comes to be glorified by His saints and to be marveled at by all those who have believed because of our testimony, because our testimony among you was believed. So, um, following that day, um, Judgment Day, some people will pay the penalty of eternal destruction and their eternity will be hell. And as this verse tells us, the worst possible thing about it is that you are completely shut out from the presence of God. And um, eternal separation from God, um, that should be more weighty than all the other bad, grotesque, um, tormenting things that Revelation tells us in the Bible um, about hell. Now, Jesus, in his preachings, he actually preached more on hell than he did on heaven. So, um, that tells us churches should be preaching about hell um, as well as heaven because, I don't know about you, but when it comes to my eternity, I want you to lay out both options for me and spell it out accurately. So, I hope to spell out heaven and hell accurately to you today. Okay, now let's get back to that question. How can a loving God send people to hell. He does not. And we are going to see this in Matthew, two verses in Matthew, um, that you, like really you could spend the next month to six months studying just these two verses. Um, this is the sheep and the goats. So on that day when the Son of Man comes um, and all his angels with him in his glory, he is going to sit on his glorious throne and all nations, everyone will be gathered before him um, and he will separate the sheep from the goats. Now here's where we're going to get into juxtaposing two um, passages in Matthew 25 and we're going to start with um, verse 33. So you may want to get your Bibles out, do some note taking here. It says, he will put the sheep on his right and the goats on the left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father's name, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Okay, now we are comparing that verse, verse to verse 41, which says, Then he will say to those on his left, the goats, Depart from me, you who are cursed into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. Now, I was super enlightened when I studied these verses and, um, and began to think about this word prepared. There has been a place prepared for everyone. So what does it mean to prepare? It means that someone has gone ahead, made necessary arrangements, um, ahead of time. So let's look at these two places that have been prepared. What were they prepared for? In verse 33, 
when it talks about um, the sheep on his right, it says that there is a kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Other, um, other um, translations say prepared for those who love the Lord. And then let's look at what hell was prepared for. It says, um, they are cursed, you who are cursed into eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Guys, this is huge. Heaven was prepared ahead of time for those who love the world. It was prepared at the foundation of the world. What was prepared at the foundation of the world? Oh yeah, the Garden of Eden. And then, who was heaven prepared? I mean, who was hell prepared for? Hell was prepared for the devil and his angels. Hell was not prepared for you and me. <laughs> hell was prepared because someone abandoned God. Someone rebelled against God, Satan, and along with a lot of other angels. And this is where we see the separation occur. That was never intended to be in the beginning. So heaven was prepared from the foundation of the world for those who love the Lord. And it, it doesn't even say for those who love the Lord. It says for you. For you. And then hell was prepared for the devil and his angels. God never intended for anybody else to join the devil and his angels there. And now let's look at how okay if God is not sending people to hell then who is let's turn to Jude and I'm gonna be in well there's only one chapter in Jude so I'm gonna start in verse 6 Jude 6 says and the angels who did not keep their own position but abandoned their proper dwelling okay the proper dwelling prepared for angels was heaven but it says they abandoned their position. Um, he has kept in eternal chains in deep darkness for the judgment on the great day. And then we go on to Jude 14, which is going to um, answer the question, so if God doesn't send people to hell, who does? It was about these that Enoch, who we mentioned um, the other day, in the seventh generation from Adam prophesied, Look, the Lord comes with tens of thousands of his holy ones to execute judgment on all and to convict the ungodly concerning the ungodly acts they have done in an ungodly way and concerning all the harsh things ungodly sinners have said against him. These sinners have um, are discontented grumblers living according to their desires their mouths utter arrogant words, flattering people for their own advantage. And then verse um, 18 goes on to say, They told you in the end time there will be scoffers living according to their own ungodly desires. These people create divisions that are worldly, having not the spirit. So that spells out the only way we get to hell is on our own accord. We, we um, through our own, following our own fleshly desires and what we want and abandoning the ways of God like Satan did, that's how people arrive at hell. It is of their own free will, of their own accord. The only person who can send me to hell is me, okay? The only person who can send me to hell is me, but grace but for grace. We're going to continue in verses 20 through 25. It says, But you, dear friends, as you build yourselves up in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in the love of God, waiting expectantly for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ for eternal life. Have mercy on those who waver. Save others by snatching them from the fire. Have mercy on others with fear, hating even the garment defiled by their flesh. Now to him who is able to protect you from stumbling and to make you stand in the presence of his glory without blemish and with great joy to the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, be glory, majesty, and power and authority before all time, now and forever. 
There is only one way to heaven, and that is God's grace. There is only one way to hell, and that is of ourselves. Only grace can get us to heaven. Only an individual can send them to hell. So let's go back to how well do you love? It says, one of the translations says that heaven was prepared for those who love the Lord. So the question is, how well do you love? How well are you showing the love of the Lord? So there is a place that has been prepared for a specific purpose, for a specific event and occasion, which is that day. And heaven was prepared for everyone. And then rebellion occurred. And so hell was prepared for the devil and his angels. God didn't want to send anybody there. God wants to bring everyone to himself. That's why he sent his son Jesus to die for all the sin of all mankind. And so guys, I, I hope you have enjoyed this devotion. I hope that it has brought some insight to you about what a loving, loving God that we serve and that he has prepared a place for you called heaven. Please like, share, and subscribe to Dirt Road Believer. And until next time, slow down. Take the dirt road, believer.